Welcome to Team G503. I am your host, Scott Schiller, and in this video, I will be removing the transmission and transfer case from the 1943 Willis MB. You might want to stick around to the end because there's some very interesting finds I found on this. I think you'll be surprised. I'm going to take advantage of the fact that the transfer case and transmission is well supported in the frame right now, and I'm going to remove these five bolts. If you notice, they're F-marked, they're forward scripted, so I can remove this cover. The PTO access cover is part number A1508. That came right off there nice. There is a gasket in there. And we can see some of the internals of the transfer case. I'm using a bar from a lift to secure the yoke from spinning and I've got it leaned up against the T90 transmission. This will keep the main shaft from spinning so I can use my breaker bar to undo the main shaft nut. After I've got the main shaft nut loose, I'll just use my socket and my ratchet to finish off removing it. The main shaft nut is part number 801367. Reaching inside the case, I'll wiggle out the main shaft gear, part number A989. This step is most necessary to remove the transmission from the transfer case. For the time being, I'm going to put the cover back on and just hand tighten the bolts. For me, it's just really easy to do that while it's still attached to the cross member on the frame. The transmission and transfer case are held to the cross member on the frame by a set of mounts, a rubber mount for the transmission with two bolts and nuts. And there's the transfer case the round mount, rubber mount, with a three-quarter inch nut. And we'll remove this, and I'm going to use the lift to remove this assembly from the frame. Just using a simple box end open end, 9 16 wrench, I can remove the nut. After removing the nut, you can notice there's a lock washer also. Remove this nut from the passenger side, same way as we did on the driver's side. got a set of lifting straps connected on the front side of the T90 transmission and on the back side between the e-brake and the transfer case. And before I remove this last mount bolt here, I'm just putting a little bit of pressure on those straps to keep that secure so it doesn't fall off the cross member. I've got my lifting straps fashioned in a way around the transfer case and the transmission so they can't slide off as I lift the unit out of the frame. The bolt on the transfer case mount goes through the mount onto the back side of the cross member. You see the bolt on the underneath side has a washer and a rubber backing, so I'll be using a socket on the bottom and the wrench on the top. Remove the nut, remove the lock washer, and the bolt will slide out through the mount and the cross member. And we see we've got some rubber pieces on here, and a washer, and another washer. And the transmission and transfer case unit is ready to be lifted out. Just lifting slowly and steadily. Get enough height to clear the frame. I've swung the unit out of the way of the frame and I've got a simple furniture dolly on the floor in front of me that I'll be able to wheel the unit around in the garage of the shop. I'll just slowly release the pressure off the cylinder on the lift. I found these furniture dollies to be extremely helpful in the shop. You can move around large parts and pieces of equipment as well as a full Jeep if they're rated for the correct weight under each wheel of the vehicle. And it's secure and in place on the dolly. I can remove the lifting straps. The transfer case is mated to the transmission with one, two, three, 
four bolts on what I would call the back side of the transmission. And this bolt on the front side of the transfer case or the head facing the front of the transmission. So I'll remove those. I like to remove the difficult ones first. So I'll start on the bottom and work my way around to the top. End goal is to separate the transmission from the transfer case. Once again, I can't stress how much using a penetrating catalyst will help you in removing these bolts, such as PB Blaster. You see how easy they come out? I'll remove the final bolt on the back side of the transmission, and then I'll spin this around so I can get to the one in the front. To get at this difficult one to reach, you've got this curvature of the transmission. It's kind of hard to get in there. You could get underneath there with a small wrench or 9 16 I'm going to go ahead and use an extension with a swivel end on my ratchet. After removing the final bolt, I'll use a soft face rubber mallet to simply strike the areas here very, very softly, and I'll separate that pretty easily. Then I'm going to use my hands and just wiggle back and forth until the transmission and transfer case are separated. Be very careful not to damage the main shaft. With the transmission and transfer case successfully separated, I'll take the T90 and I'll store it away for a future video where we'll disassemble this. And here's a surprise at the end. It's a GPA transfer case, Ford. It's marked GPA 774 number 2. That's absolutely fantastic. This will get used in a future project and somebody will be really happy to have this for their GPA. Here you can see the F mark and the GPW mark that would be correct for a GPA transfer case. Pretty cool, huh? GPA transfer case in a 1943 Willis MB with a T90 transmission. You just never know. It's, it's fantastic and it's awesome. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to follow along, we're making great progress on the disassembly of the 1943 Willis MB. You can follow us and subscribe at Team G503 on YouTube. Until next time, keep it safe and happy jeeping.